Hey everybody, my name is Paul Vicheski and welcome to the Real Estate Classroom YouTube channel. Hey, before we get started, as always, give this video a thumbs up, hit that red subscribe button, click on the notification bell. Comments and questions down below in the comment section. Love, love, love comments and questions. All right, so in today's video, this is actually video one of three. It's a three-part series on the appraisal process. Everything that you need to know as a real estate professional, but also as a student studying for their real estate exam. And it starts with this video. Okay, appraisals, appraisers, the appraisal report. These are things that you have to know for your real estate licensing exam. Now, why do we have appraisals? Why do we do them? Why are they necessary? Well, things need to have an, there has to be a mechanism, if you will, for an independent third party, someone that's disinterested in the transaction to determine value of things. Now we get appraisals for obviously homes that are being bought and sold, commercial properties, industrial, uh, land, but we also get appraisals for things like personal property and coin collections and vehicles, antique vehicles, antiques. See, there are so many different things that we need appraisals for, and this is why it's an entire industry. Now, in this particular case, in these three videos, we're gonna discuss appraisals insofar as how it relates to real estate. The reason we have appraisals is so a disinterested third party is gonna determine or estimate the value of a property based on the data that's available to that appraiser, okay? Now I got the appraisal process outlined on the screen, and I, so we're just gonna take a 50,000 50, foot view of how the process works. It all starts with that licensed appraiser who's been hired by the lender or the buyer to do an appraisal on a piece of property that uh, someone wants to buy. Now typically that's, uh, it's done because the lender wants to ensure that they're not going to loan more money than the home is, is worth. The buyer wants to know because they don't want to pay more than the home is worth. And it all starts with identifying the subject property. So the, the, the appraiser is going to get a, an order from the lender and it's going to give the subject property's address. The subject property is the property that we're trying to determine the value on. Okay. It's that piece of property that the purchaser has uh, put an offer to purchase in on. The appraiser, once he's he or she's determined the subject uh, property, then they're going to start collecting the data to determine the value. And it starts with they're going to collect they're going to collect data and do an economic analysis, a neighborhood analysis, and a property analysis. So let's talk about each one briefly. Economic analysis. Uh, they're going to research and collect data on how's the community itself doing is it growing is it stagnant is it you know is it depopulating is there industries that are coming in uh, and creating jobs is there industries that are closing down increasing in unemployment those type of things neighborhood analysis neighborhood analysis determines what that specific surrounding area around the subject property is like is it aging is the material condition of the neighborhood declining? Is it is crime rates going up? Those type of things, because that all has an impact on the future value. And then we have the property analysis, and that is the property specifically. Is it run down? Is it being maintained? Those type of things. Next in uh, bullet point C, the appraiser is going to then determine what's the appropriate, what we call approach to value or the appropriate type of appraisal. And there are three that you have to be aware of. The first one is what's called a sales comparison approach or sometimes called a market data approach. This is the one that we see in the uh, single family homes arena. This is where the subject property, that subject property is that property that we're trying to find the value for. We compare that to similar type properties that have recently sold within the, you know, the last six months, maybe a year, uh, but they've recently sold and then we make the comparisons. Cost approach deals more with the replacement value. So if I'm an insurance company, I'm going to want a cost approach to insure a church, for example. 
where there really are no comparables to, to look for. And it's based on how much money would it take or cost the insurance company if there's a total casualty to rebuild this church to look like it does today in today's dollars minus depreciation. Interestingly enough, of all the three approaches to value that you see on your screen, cost approach is the only one that takes into consideration depreciation. And we're gonna talk about depreciation in a different video. And then the last one is income approach. We use this type of appraisal for income producing properties. Things like uh, apartment communities and retail malls and things like that. The key to remember with income producing or income approach to value is income producing properties, income approach to value. The appraiser in D is gonna analyze all the results and then there, he or she is gonna put it into that written appraisal report. So okay, so as I said before, the purpose of the appraisal is to define the value, but understand that, you know, depending on the industry, value means something different to different people. So for example, if I'm a lender, um, I want um, value for me is ensuring that we don't loan more than the property is worth. If I am an insurance company, I don't want to over-insure the property, uh, those type of things. So value represents today's worth or today's value. That's what the appraisal does. And it does infer some future benefit. As you remember in our last slide there, we were talking about the neighborhood analysis and the economic analysis. That's what that statement is saying. We're gonna determine the uh, the present value, and then we're going to report whether or not this area, this community, this neighborhood is progressing or regressing. Very important to the valuation process. Now, next I want to get into and in bullet point number two is what are all the different reasons that we uh, we need appraisals? And that's important to know. And look at bullet point 2A there. There are two key terms, two key real estate terms that you have to know. And I've seen these on, in fact, I seen market price on my broker's exam several years ago. Market value is defined as the most probable price in which a willing buyer will buy and a willing seller will sell. Market price was the actual sale price. So let me give you an example. Let's say that, uh, well, real estate agents, they do what's called competitive market analysis or sometimes called a CMA. They go out to the property, they, they do a similar analysis like the appraiser does to determine what the current market value is. Now, the difference between what an agent does and an appraisal appraiser does is the agent is gonna determine the market value, which is the value in today's dollars. Let me give you an example. If you live in an area that the market is extremely hot, there's high demand, which is driving up prices. That means homes in a certain a certain neighborhood, a month ago, the average price could have been 200,000, but now the average price is 225, all right? So real estate professionals are gonna go out and determine the market value in today's, today's dollars. So the agent puts the house up for sale for 200,000 because he or she believes that's the market value. Well, they get a whole bunch of offers in, there's a bidding war that happens and now the market price, the actual sale price is $225,000. That is a direct reflection of the market. Then comes along an appraiser. Now the appraiser uses a different process. They use the actual market price of properties that have sold, similar properties that have sold over the last six months, maybe a year, which if it's a rising market, that means there those comparables is what we call them. Those homes that it sold three, six, seven months ago, they're going to have a lower market price. So what happens is we get a uh, we get an appraisal that comes back at two hundred and five thousand instead of the two twenty five, which was the actual purchase price, and it puts that deal in jeopardy. We call it obtaining a bad. Uh, the, a bad appraisal. That's what we call it, a bad appraisal. When the, appraise, the appraised value doesn't meet or exceed the, the uh, actual purchase price. We're not going to go into what happens when that happens, but it's important to understand those two concepts here that market price reflects the current 
supply and demand of a neighborhood or a particular type house, and then the market price is the actual price. Let's look at 2B, loan value. Certainly that if you're a lender and you're loaning money, you wanna determine whether or not the subject property, uh, what, the, what the value of the collateral is so the, you know, the lender doesn't loan more than the house is worth. 2C, insurance value. That's for appraisal that's done for insurance coverages. D, tax value. I have seen, and it's common, where a, an appraisal is done on property and other things like coin collections and antiques and vehicles and other things because someone who owned them has passed away. And now for the purpose of inheritance taxes that need to be paid, um, the value has to be established. And remember that appraiser, whether it's someone who's appraising homes or coin collections or antiques, they're that disinterested third party and their job is to give an honest valuation, disin disinterested uh, valuation. Look at 2E, tax assessments. If you live in an area where property taxes are very high and you wanna challenge those property taxes, then a, uh, an, appraiser's, an appraisal is done to establish what we call the ad vol valorum tax. I actually misspelled it, it should be AD, ad valorum tax. That's what we call property tax. So you use an appraisal to go out and challenge the valuation for tax purposes. 2F, eminent domain. If the school district in that area wants to buy that house through eminent domain, then typically what they're gonna do is get three independent appraisers to go out and do an appraisal. And then they usually average the three uh, valuations of the individual appraisals and that's that is what the eminent domain value becomes relocation if if somebody is being transferred with their company and a relocation company is involved many times a relocation company will actually buy the house well they're going to want a, a, an appraisal that's done to make sure that they know the accurate value liquidation 2h if there is a forced auction or a forced sale i have seen this where uh, the bank has to foreclose on a on a farm or a ranch, and they're going to have a forced sale or an auction. They'll have a an appraisal done. Uh, typically, it's the higher value, you know, million, two, three, four million type uh, pieces of property. And then, unfortunately, divorces. It's not uncommon to have an appraisal done so marital assets can be adequately and correctly distributed through the divorce process. Bullet point number three, competitive market analysis or a uh, competitive market analysis or what we call a CMA and a fee appraisal. Agents have to know this um, because in your, in your exam, many times you have to take the, you have to take a term and take the definition of the term and apply it to the situation that's outlined in the, in the test question. You have to know that a competitive market analysis, which is a CMA, is what real estate agents do. Fee appraisal is something that a licensed appraiser does. All right, that's you're not going to see a an appraiser go out and do a market analysis, and you're not going to see a, a real estate agent go do an appraisal. Okay, big difference. All right, now before you go, remember this is video one of three. It's a three-part series. I'm gonna put the second video to my right here in the box. If you have not subscribed yet, highly encourage you to do that. Click the little circle to my left here. And as always, questions and comments down below. Other than that, thanks for hanging. I'll see you in the next video, which is part two to the appraisal process.